Welcome back to Travels at Large. If you're new here, my name is Josh. I do reviews and tours of cruise ships and resorts. And over the last 10 years, I have traveled to several different countries all over the world. And I enjoy sharing my experiences with everyone. But tonight, I am on board the Norwegian Bliss. And I'd like to discuss with you what I think could use some improvement, what went well, and some tips and tricks. That way it'll make your next voyage that much more enjoyable. First, I'd like to discuss a little bit about the Norwegian Bliss. The Norwegian Bliss went into service in February of 2018, so it is a fairly newer ship. And once you get on board, you can see that just by how clean and well kept the ship is, that it is a newer vessel. Um, on board, the Norwegian Bliss can fit about 4,000 guests. It is one of the bigger ships. So just a heads up on that. I'd like to start with the boarding process. This cruise went from Los Angeles to Vancouver, Canada on a repositioning cruise to get the Norwegian Bliss ready for the Alaskan market. Uh, the boarding process at the port of Los Angeles I think could have went significantly better. There was excessively long lines. Uh, they said it took a while for the ship to clear the U.S. Coast Guard. Not really sure what happened there, but I think Norwegian could have handled the crowd control at the port a lot better. Here you can see in the video there's lines for almost as far as you can see, which is not the best way to start your vacation. Also, another hiccup I had at the port is for whatever reason the app uh, that Norwegian uses would not load, which I did not have access to my boarding documents. Honestly, I should have personally printed out those boarding documents and brought those to the port with me. However, I relied on the app, which did not work at the port. However, that being said, the agent that was helping me get checked in to get my room key was very helpful and was able to help me without that. So that was a saving grace. I was kind of worried about that, but she got me taken care of. Uh, once I got on board, I enjoyed the ship for a little while. Finally, later in the evening, my room was ready, which as you can see, I am currently standing in. My room is a studio room, which is very nice on board Norwegian. One thing that they do is they have these studio cabins, which are interior cabins, has room for about one person. There's a small desk, a TV. Uh, one thing that's cool is this outside view, um, which is provided through a TV that's mounted in the wall. That way it doesn't feel like it's in as cramped. That's one thing that's really nice about this room. A uh, couple things about this room. There's not anywhere to really put your folded clothes. There's no like dresser drawers or anything to kind of help with that. So you kind of got creative with how you store your clothes. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, the noises from the rooms around you sometimes is heard a little bit better than it has been for me on other cruises. So if you're a light sleeper, might think of having a noise app on your phone to kind of help you fall asleep so also uh, one thing that's cool with these studio rooms is there is a lounge that's shared between all the studio rooms which they have an espresso machine in there they also have some juices some light snacks and there's a lot of chairs some board games that way if you want to get out of your room and socialize a little bit there's a nice place to do that so also another thing to keep in mind in this room unfortunately there is no fridge being a returning norwegian guest uh, with the room i did get uh, complimentary six bottles of water which is really nice because i like to have bottled water in my room unfortunately there's no fridge to put those bottles in so i had to get a little creative and um, find a good place to store those as the room didn't have a lot of space also, the desk in the room is very narrow, hard to fit a laptop on, so kind of keep that in mind as well. Um, if you're a person that uses the laptop on your lap, then you'll be fine. Unfortunately, I like to use it on a desk, so made it a little more difficult for me. Dining on board, one thing that's nice about Norwegian, they do do things a little different. Uh, they have a freestyle mentality about their cruising, which means that they're a little more relaxed and vacation-like. So on board the ship, um, the dress code is a little more lax. You don't have to dress in a three-piece suit to go to dinner. Also, you're not assigned a dining room. Buffet on board uh, is one of the complimentary places to eat. 
I find that there's plenty of options in there and the food is pretty decent. Um, it, I wouldn't say it's five star Michelin food, but it definitely is a decent prepared option for you. In the buffet, there's up to, I believe it's six ice cream machines. So if the little ones like some ice cream, definitely have that as an option. The main dining room switch on board this ship is the Manhattan Room, Saber and Taste. So uh, keep that in mind. That is one thing I found on this ship. The reservations help because otherwise you could be waiting up to an hour and a half for a table when uh, it comes time for dining. The specialty dining, the package that I booked came with one meal, which uh, one thing to keep in mind when uh, with the meals and the drink package and all that is it covers the first two guests. If you have a third or fourth guest with you, it does not cover them, so you'll have to pay for them. For the first two guests, it is there. Um, I went to Cagney Steakhouse, which was really good. I had the filet mignon with truffle potatoes, which if I can get that recipe for those truffle potatoes, I would be happy because they were very, very delicious. The entertainment on board, unfortunately, I did not make it to any of the uh, main theater shows, but I did make it to the social comedy club where I saw two different comedians on two different nights. The first one was a gentleman by the last name of Simmons. I'm having a hard time remembering his first name. He was pretty good. Uh, however, the second night was Landry and he, uh, I think he did a really, really good job in involving the crowd and also uh, his energy levels. He was hilarious and I definitely recommend if you can catch him on board, definitely show you will not regret going to. couple or a little information about the pools on board uh, there's two main pools uh, for everybody to use uh, several hot tubs I believe there's up to nine hot tubs on the ship there is a pool in the Haven for those guests that have booked a Haven suite uh, they have their own little area but the two main pools are heated uh, all the water on board is chlorinated not salt water so uh, that way something to just keep in mind the heated pools is great especially going into the Alaskan season As far as if you're wanting to do some shopping on board, they do have kind of the general shops that you find on most cruises. They have a logo shop where you can buy Norwegian items, uh, not Norwegian culture, but uh, Norwegian from a company standpoint. They also have a place where you can buy watches and duty free, where you can buy alcohol, cigarettes, things like that. Um, they have makeup, perfume, those sort of things. They also have a photo place which sells cameras if you happen to forget yours or looking for an upgrade. They do have that on board. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, from what I could tell, they don't have a lot for children to buy. So if you're wanting to buy for your kids back home, like a little gift or something, it may be hard to find something on board. But um, if you forgot something at home, they have it. No problems there. So one thing I'd like to discuss is the technology on board. The technology on board, the Norwegian Bliss, I would say it's pretty fair up to par with other ships, touchscreen TVs throughout so you can see what's going on, see where you need to go. Um, the Wi-Fi on board, there's three different options of Wi-Fi packages. Depends on how you book the cruise. There is the, uh, like the five free offers that they usually run a special on. With that, you get 75 minutes free of internet. However, with that, just a heads up, there is a $3.95 connection or activation fee. Some people didn't know that and weren't a fan of that, but um, that is one thing to keep in mind. I did upgrade my internet to the next package, um, but unfortunately with that package, um, I mean, the speeds were decent, but you couldn't access videos. So uh, you had to get the top of the, pack, top of the line package which I should have got. That way I can upload YouTube videos and things like that on the go, which is something I normally do. The Norwegian app sometimes gets a little glitchy, um, but overall, uh, the internet is decent. I mean, you're out at sea, it's not gonna be like at land, but uh, for internet at sea, it's decent. So uh, definitely something to use there. So in conclusion today, um, I like to first what went, what I think went really well. Uh, the food on board is definitely pretty good. Um, another thing, the the crew on board is above and beyond. Uh, they're personable. They're people on here. 
They'll engage in conversation with you. They're there to take care of your needs. They work hard, but uh, they're very personable. And that's one thing I definitely like um, in dealing with crew, especially as a solo cruiser. It's nice just talking to somebody sometimes and um, just saying, hey, hi, how was your day? Getting to know their family or whatever. Um, definitely something that was very enjoyable. One thing I would say is if you are interested in splurging a little bit on yourself, don't skip out on the specialty dining. The specialty dining restaurants on this ship, they do have a little upcharge, but um, if that's something you would like to spend on, I don't think you'll waste your money. It's something that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, they have all sorts of restaurants on board, Japanese steakhouse, French, Italian, um, a regular steakhouse, like it's all there. As far as what could have went better, the boarding process definitely stands up pretty high on my list. Uh, we also had an issue when we got to Victoria, Canada, which was one of our ports of call on this cruise. Uh, when we got there, we were supposed to be able to be off the ship by 8 a.m. However, we didn't clear local customs until almost 10. So it seems like Norwegians having a little bit of issue with clearing customs and coast guards and things like that. So that's definitely something I think they can improve on and try to streamline that process because um, that kind of slows everything down. And if you're trying to get to a shore excursion that you booked outside of Norwegian, or it's gonna be very difficult to do so. So uh, definitely one thing to keep in mind. Another thing, the elevators, if uh, you have a hard time getting around, be patient. The There's only two elevator shafts on this cruise ship. There's a forward and there's an aft elevator on this ship. Each of those elevator banks has eight elevators. However, um, the elevators, it's kind of hard to get one a lot of times. I don't think there's enough elevators for the size of ship. There's 4,000 people on this ship. They're all trying to go different places. So um, I think they could have added another elevator shaft personally and had a forward, mid, and aft. But a couple tips and tricks. Uh, one thing, the local bar on board is on deck seven. If you're looking for some pub fare, nice place to hang out. Um, definitely don't miss out on that. They have good food. They have Rubens, hot dogs, hamburgers, kind of pub fare. Uh, they have pretzel bites, which are really good. And then for dessert, they have like carrot cake, cheesecake, definitely some good options. And the best part is, is the local is complimentary. There is no upcharge for that restaurant. So uh, you can enjoy a nice sit down meal. Don't have to make a reservation. You can show up and um, kind of depends on how busy they are, usually get you in. So um, also the Wi-Fi package on board can be used on multiple devices. Um, you just have to log out of one, log into another. Works really good for me because I'll go on my phone and then I'll go to my laptop later, send some emails or whatever. So I can bounce back and forth. Just can't use both at the same time. Tips and tricks that I think work really well on this ship. Uh, if you found any of this information helpful, definitely please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, anything like that, put them in the comments below. I enjoy reading those. Um, I'll respond to them as quick as I can. And tonight from the Norwegian Bliss, in a small world, travel large. Good night.